What's going on, guys? Well, Jesus. What's going on, guys? Juan here today with a brand new video. Welcome back to the channel. And as always, very excited to be here with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. First off, I want to apologize for my absence. I know it's been like a month and a week or so that I haven't posted a YouTube video. And, you know, I think when October, November hit, it's just been a whirlwind of work between my freelance stuff with TSN, MLSE, and my own freelance work apart from those two entities have just, it's one thing after another. And whenever I've been prepping myself to shoot one of these videos, a request comes in or something comes up and I got to push this to the back burner, but had some time tonight, decided to record a video for you guys today. And I'm really excited to get back here in front of the camera to talk to you guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be kind of talking about three different things. Number one, the quality of my settings when I'm shooting video. Number two, I'm going to be talking about my sequence settings in Premiere Pro before I start building out my videos. And finally, my export settings in order to make sure that whenever I post on Instagram or TikTok, it's as high quality as possible. And I do my best to avoid any compression, but buyer beware, you're going to get compression no matter what. So there is no perfect formula. This is just kind of what I've been doing for the last couple of years, and it's worked fine for me so far. So hopefully you guys get something out of this. To put it bluntly, though, compression is going to happen no matter what. Basically, if you upload anything to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, the quality will not be as good as the first time you see it after an export or in your project. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of things, especially nowadays when things are getting shot in 4K and 6K, you know, those files are so big that these platforms have to adjust to those sizes. So no matter what you do, you're never going to get 100% quality when you're throwing something up on Instagram. It's just the way it is. So with that being out of the way, the first thing I kind of want to talk about is the quality of the footage you're shooting and also your settings and camera. I'm going to rip off the bandaid and just be completely honest with you guys. I shoot everything in 4k and I mean, pretty much almost everything. Now, is shooting everything in 4K a good idea? Yes. Is it also a terrible idea? Absolutely. The reason being, one, obviously 4K footage is huge in size. And so obviously my hard drives here and my hard drives that I edit off of suffer a lot and I'm spending a lot of money on storage. That's just the unfortunate reality that if you wanna shoot in 4K crispy quality, you're gonna have to sacrifice on one end and that side is storage space. Now, apart from me hating my hard drives, which is not the reason I shoot everything in 4K, there are a lot of reasons why I choose to shoot 99% of my content in 4K quality. The first one, and it's not super relevant to today's topic, but it is good to know is that if you're shooting everything in 4K quality, you're gonna have the ability to punch in a lot more to reframe your shots, focus on a different part of your composition, a lot of things like that, because there's a lot more quality in the shot. And so you're able to punch in a little more, you can pretty much, readjust your shot in post any way you like so keep that in mind if you are shooting 4k quality you have a lot more flexibility in post to reframe your shots and fix any compositions that might look off otherwise apart from that though the main reason i'm shooting in 4k is to retain a lot of that quality through compression and being able to mitigate that by shooting in high quality all the time now this isn't exactly science and i don't know if i'm exactly right on this i could be totally wrong but my logic when it comes to this is that since you're uploading high quality footage Footage, higher quality than your standard phone video or anything shot in 1080p. There's a lot more data that they have to compress on these platforms, but they can't compress all of it. So in comparing, you know, 1080p footage that I've uploaded in the past to 4K footage now, I still lose a lot of, you know, detail and a lot of quality in the footage but it looks significantly better than anything that wasn't shot in 4K. So at the end of the day, shooting everything in 4K may be a little overkill. My hard drives definitely hate me, but it definitely benefits me a lot when it comes to post-production, when it comes to retaining high quality footage through that compression system when you're throwing something up on TikTok or Instagram. Another thing to consider when you're shooting before you even get onto Premiere Pro to edit and export your footage is your lens choices because they make a huge difference in the quality of your footage depending on what kind of glass you're using on your camera. I'll give you an example. So I'm actually shooting this right now on a Tamron 17 to 28. It's the same thing as this Tamron 24 to 70 in terms of glass quality. And this is a great lens. I've talked a lot about this lens. However, there's a big difference from when I'm using this lens to something like my Zeiss 55 millimeter, 
which is one of my best lenses. It's one of the sharpest things I've ever owned in terms of glass. And the quality of footage just goes that much higher when I'm using that lens. I'll throw up some footage here of an NHL workout video I shot pretty much exclusively with my 55 millimeter. And this footage might be the best high quality footage I've ever uploaded on Instagram. I feel like I lost nearly zero quality on this upload. And I think I credit that a lot to not just shooting in 4K, but also having a really good piece of glass that's going to keep a lot of detail and be tack sharp throughout. So. Apart from your in-camera settings, I think the glass you use makes a huge difference in the quality of your videos. But you don't need to use something like a prime lens or a very expensive lens. That's just a small thing that's going to make a bit of a difference. I shoot most of my stuff on this Tamron 28-75 or my Sony 70-200. Neither are primes. They're good pieces of glass, but I compensate somewhat because I'm always shooting 4K. So. You just have to find the right balance of the right lens choice and what quality footage you're shooting at the time. But that kind of does it for any in-camera settings that I use to keep high quality. We're gonna go into Premiere Pro now and I'm gonna show you guys both my sequence settings and my settings when I export a video. Hey, editor Juan from the future here. I wanted to pause really quickly and apologize in advance before we go into Premiere Pro because I realized I kind of messed up our screen recording here. So I totally realized as soon as I stopped recording my audio and my camera and I stopped OBS, which is the platform that I use to record my screen, that I totally was not recording my entire screen and that's on me for not double and triple checking. Although it's a new software, I'm still getting used to it. So I apologize if you can't see everything I'm talking about, but I just kind of did a quick scrub through the footage and all the important information is still visible. You might not see the clip in my timeline, you might not see my adjustment layers, but for the sake of the video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in terms of sequence settings, export settings, nothing else has changed. I just want to apologize for that little hiccup. And I know some people might be, you could re-record the video, but I just spent like an hour and a half recording this video and I think I did a pretty decent job. So for now, I apologize. I'll make sure next time the screen recording is doing the full screen, I should have just double checked it, that's on me, but back to the video. So now that we're in Premiere, like I said, we're gonna go over three different things. The first being my sequence settings. They don't have a huge impact on the quality retention or anything along those lines, but I know I'm gonna get a few questions asked about my sequence settings anyway, so I might as well show you guys. So in my Premiere Pro window here, I have my bin set up. This is just a project from a Ryerson game that happened this past weekend. And I'm just gonna use some of the footage to showcase kind of my export settings and everything along those lines. So in my Premiere Pro window, I can currently see all my bins right now. And this is just a Premiere Pro project from a Ryerson game that happened this past weekend, just to use some footage as an example. So I'm gonna go under sequences and here are my most used sequence settings. Uh, these are just kind of the ones I use in my day-to-day -day life, whether it's a 16x9 video regular for YouTube or something for social like a 1x1, one one, a 4x5, or a vertical 9x16. Also, if you guys are curious, I do have a free Premiere Pro project template available on my Selfie store. It basically is just a blank slate template with all these bins and these preset sequences are already in there. So if you don't want to build your own sequences, if you want to use exactly what I'm using, you can head over. I'll leave the link down in the description. It is free and you'll get all these sequences and all these other preset made bins and everything for your projects. Anyway, so like I said, all of these sequences are just my most common ones. They are all 1080p with the exception of a 16 by 9 here that is in 4K. That is primarily if I want to do anything for YouTube or if I'm exporting a high quality video that isn't for Instagram for a client. But just to show you guys the settings of these, these are exactly pretty much all the same minus the one. If you go into sequence settings, editing mode, DSLR, 23.976 frames per second for the timeline. I edit everything in 24 frames per second timeline, 23.967, whatever you fancy. I don't edit in any other frame rate. It just looks the most natural. It gives me the best results. I highly recommend that you edit in a 23.976 frames per second timeline, unless you're trying to go for a more particularly stylized look. Other than that, I don't really touch anything minus the frame size. This is a four by five, so it's a 1080 by 1350. If you want a square, it's a 1080 by 1080 and so on and so on. So if you guys want, pause the video, take a look. You can copy exactly what I have here, but this is just the settings for my sequences. They're exactly the same across the board. And just to show you guys really quickly, my 4K sequence is pretty much the same. DSLR mode, 23.976 frames per second, 3840, 2160 quality. It's 4K, 16 by 9. Everything else stays the same. 
So naturally shooting everything in 4K, it's bigger than the actual sequence. So when I import a video into the project, I do need to downsize it and I downscale it down to the 1080 size. So when you're exporting, we are also exporting in 1080p, again, with the exception of that 4K sequence. So moving on here, I'm just gonna open my nine by 16 because I already have a video clip in this sequence. It was just a quick Instagram reel that I did for the women's basketball team at Ryerson for their Instagram. Play it through for you guys, nothing crazy, just a nice sidestep. The girl goes flying off frame and a nice jumper to boot. Sequence 23.976, shooting settings. I was shooting at 4K at 120 frames per second. So same thing, I shoot everything in 4K. But when you're done editing your clip, when you're all good to go, this is also another really important step to retain high quality and that is sharpening in post. So the reason I sharpen a little bit in post is because the sharpening that happens in camera sometimes look a little unnatural. So I actually have my sharpness turned down on my camera and I do a little bit more in post. I'll show you guys really quickly here in the effects controls. If you go to creative, you're gonna go to sharpen and you're gonna see I have it to 35. Depending on your footage, you just kind of have to play around with it. With the quality out of the A7S III and what I'm shooting in, I find anything from 25 to 35 does the job most of the time. It doesn't make a crazy big change, but it just kind of adds a little bit more detail and refines the edges and the look of your footage in terms of sharpness. So as you can see here, I typically just throw it on my top adjustment layer, which is one of the many adjustment layers I use for post color. Uh, that's another story for another day. I still have to find time to make a color grading tutorial, but my top layer is usually a little bit more of a creative LUT at like, like you see here, 20% and sharpening at 35, just for that little nice added touch for quality purposes. But once you have your file ready, you've color graded, you sharpen a little bit in post, you're happy with your final product, we're gonna hit Command M to open up our export window. And this is where I do change a few things from the base original Premiere Pro export settings. So format is H.264. The preset, it says custom, obviously because I'm changing a few things in the panels down here, but to reiterate, I am editing this on a 1080p timeline. It's just downsized 4K footage. So you're getting the 4K quality exported in 1080p file. Now, this is really the only three things I change in my export settings, and I don't touch anything else. It's just these three things. Number one, you wanna make sure you check off maximum render quality. Just make sure you're getting the most quality possible out of your render from the footage on your timeline. The second thing doesn't really have to do with quality, but it actually has to do with the color grid and the way Premiere Pro processes colors via an export. So typically when you're exporting something in Premiere Pro in a brand new project, this Lumetri look slash LUT option is clicked off. And you probably just noticed that the color shifted very slightly in this preview window. If I click it again, you're gonna notice I get a little darker, a little bit more contrasty, and there's a reason for this. So very early on when I started video editing and got into color grading, I noticed that whenever I exported a video from Premiere Pro and then saw it on my laptop screen or on my phone, the color grade looks significantly different. And this was before, sometimes I even had an external monitor. Even if I'm editing on my MacBook screen with the Retina display, which is great quality and pretty pristine colors, I was always noticing a difference between in Premiere Pro and in the export. The reason for this color shift is the way Premiere Pro is actually designed to handle an export for broadcast, which uses a completely different set of colors and gammas and handles blacks different and a lot of other things that I don't really know, but I have a decent idea as to why. So really early on, I feel like Adobe noticed this and slash they probably had people complaining about it but they did release a fix to it in the form of a LUT. So if I go into my applied LUTs here, I'm gonna to go to select and it's gonna open up my finder. And right here, it's just on my hard drive for easy access is a QT gamma compensation LUT. I always, always, always make sure that this is on the export window. I know it says none, but it has applied because if I uncheck this, you're gonna notice there's a color shift, less contrasty. Now, and may look like it's changing the actual color grade. It does not. It's just telling Premiere Pro, this is how you're gonna process these colors so it comes out the right way. If anyone wants to correct me on anything I just said, feel free. This is just my kind of light understanding about it, but just know Premiere Pro does treat your colors differently. So you need to do this one extra step to make sure that your colors in the end are accurate. Nothing to do with quality, 
but just a little tip for you guys. Also, I will be leaving that LUT in the description below so you guys can download it just from Adobe, super simple. Finally, the last thing I do before exporting any kind of video is going to the video tab here of your export window. You're gonna scroll a little bit until you find bitrate settings. Now, again, these are changed just because I've already exported this video before, the presets already saved, but when you typically open Premiere and you don't touch anything, the first time you're gonna find this, you're gonna find that it's called VBR One Pass. And this is probably set at like 10 megabits per second target rate. I'm gonna reiterate before I move on, I don't really know the science and the processing behind all of this. I know with like 90% confidence, I found this method online. And if I remember whose video it was, I would totally shout them out. But I know several other people have touched upon this topic before, but I found this a long time ago onto exporting high quality videos for Instagram on another video and I just kind of stuck with it since. Don't know the reason, it just works for me. I don't know the science behind it. It just works and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So when you get to bitrate settings, you wanna to go to VBR two pass and then you're gonna to wanna to change these numbers to what I have on screen. So usually now it would be 10 and 12. So I have it at 18 for target bitrate, which is the first one. And the second one is maximum bitrate at 20. Again, I don't know the science behind it, but what I understand is that Premiere Pro kind of runs your export twice, once and then once over again. What I understand from it is just, it retains more quality by exporting it twice and just kind of giving it, taking in all the information possible from the clip. And at the end, you should have a slightly bigger file. And I will say right now, your exports are gonna take a little time. Because when I click export, after you've done everything, you've changed your LUT, you've done the VBR 2 pass, and you've clicked maximum render quality, when you hit export, you're gonna notice really quickly, it's gonna say pass one of two. So this is just saying Premiere Pro is in its first pass of the export. So it's essentially running through the video, exporting it once, and then it'll do it again. If anyone down in the comments wants to explain to me what's actually happening here, I'm all ears. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've been doing this for like the last two and a half, three years. It seems to still be working. So this has just been my process. Like I said, your export is gonna take a little longer because it's basically exporting two times. So now you're done exporting, that kind of does it for the post-production side. And then now it's, you know, transferring it to your phone to post. I know Instagram, you can post from your desktop. I haven't tried that yet, but I will always post from my phone. And the main way I get my final video from my laptop to my phone is through AirDrop. So sorry, Android users or anyone who doesn't have a MacBook or an iPhone, you're kind of out of luck at this point, but that's just the method I find works the best to retain quality when it comes from transferring it from one device to another. There are solutions like Google Drive, Dropbox, or WeTransfer, or texting it to yourself via iMessage or WhatsApp. But I find, especially with texting it to yourself, people have told me to do that before, and I find like there's a lot of compression via iMessage or WhatsApp. Uh, I don't know if that's the same for Google Drive, WeTransfer, or Dropbox, but for me, super easy just to airdrop from one device to another. And then I have it on my phone and I just go straight to posting. Nothing else really changes from there. I mean, you know, making sure you have a strong internet connection on your phone, I think is a pretty important thing that not a lot of people talk about. I feel like I've uploaded a few things with low internet quality and you notice it when you upload it. Sometimes if I'm not really trusting my internet or even if I'm out and about, I'll just upload on my data if my signal's strong enough. But for the most part, after this whole process, just make sure you have a decent enough connection to the internet or to your network, and you should be good to go post it. And again, you're not gonna get a perfectly crispy, super high ultra definition video when you put it on Instagram because there's gonna be compression. The clips on my laptop look way, way better and way, way sharper than they do when they're up on Instagram, Twitter, or any other digital platform. But that does it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching if you've made it this far. I know it was a bit of a more boring video, but this was a topic that I have been getting asked about a lot recently. So I'm happy to finally tackle it and kind of talk you guys through this process. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button below to help me in the algorithm. And also if you haven't, make sure to subscribe I haven't posted in a month, but I feel like there's a lot of new people subscribing to my channel and I'm really happy to see the growth. And again, I'm sorry for my absence. I will try to post more regularly and shoot more regularly for you guys. If you guys also haven't followed me on social media, make sure you do so at 77J Morales across all platforms. And anything I mentioned in this video, like the Premiere Pro folder template or the compensation left for Premiere Pro, I'll leave everything down in the description below for you guys. Anyways, that kind of does it for me here. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.